Hey there, this is Ben's channel. We are working on the 1989 Ford Probe 2.2 liter turbo, intercooled turbo. We had, in the past we have replaced the fuel pump because that had been a known issue. So this time what we were trying to do was diagnose why it still won't start if the fuel pump is new and it works. And we knew we had fuel pressure because we had tested that as well. So this time we were working on some diagnostics. So we tested spark. That's, and we actually tested it in two different ways. We did um, a timing light and we also pulled a plug and actually watched the spark. We checked the timing. So we removed the cover from the top of the crank there and checked the timing and the timing is correct. So then we checked to make sure fuel was getting as far as the fuel rail. So we pulled this little nut guy here and when you crank, fuel comes out copiously, which is what it's supposed to do. So then we kind of came down to, okay, it's probably something with the injectors. And before we pull the injectors and replace them because they're expensive and hard to do, we wanted to test the electricity. So we got a fuel injector noid light kit. So you just plug that little guy into the uh, fuel injector electrical connection there and crank and it blinks if the electricity is getting there to tell the fuel injectors to open and it blinked the way it was supposed to, which means we've come down to the fuel injectors themselves are hooped and we're going to have to replace them. So that is what we did in the rest of this video is the diagnostic process was the diagnostic process of how we got to the fuel injectors are hooped. Sweet. Hey folks, welcome to Ben's channel. We are working on the 1989 Ford Probe. So when Ben got this car, he was told by the previous owners that it had a fuel pump issue, which he tested and yes, it was an issue. So he replaced the fuel pump. Uh, that didn't stop the problem, so, so it start. still doesn't start. Right. The next step we have, in we have fuel pressure now, like the fuel yep. pressure is there. We just don't have. It's not. It's not firing. It's not firing. So the next step in troubleshooting is to test the spark, and see if we have spark. And the next step from there will go different directions depending on whether or not we have spark. So we are going to use an induction light. Yeah, I got an induction timing light here. A timing light. Um, you can also put an instrument between the spark plug and the spark sparkulator, um, the wire and stuff. But uh, I find induction's easier because then I don't have to remove anything. <laughs> okay. And uh, so with my with this one here, it's a Bosch. Um, it's fairly simple. We're going to hook the negative to the negative side of the battery. It does need a 12 volt power source. Try not to short those out. And then we'll put the positive on that side. And then you put the induction clamp on, uh, we're gonna go for cylinder number one here. And it just needs to loop around like such. So okay. now what we'll get now is when we hold down the power button on this light, we should be getting a strobe effect, which is gonna be my timing, but it's also gonna be telling me that uh, I've got spark. Uh, if this doesn't flicker, then that means that we're not getting spark and that we're gonna have to look at something in the ignition system. I wonder if that battery's got enough juice to spin it. Let's find out. Blinking? Yeah. Definitely blinking. Blinking like a gun, so that's fantastic not. So that means the ignition system's probably okay, which means that I'm thinking uh, we might have skipped something on our timing belt, which is why we're our uh, sparkulators aren't going off at the right time. So that would be why we're not. And it smells of gasoline, but um, that didn't leak. So we're ace is there and it's full, oh, it's cold too. So it's full of fuel now. That's gonna be, we so probably we still have, have fuel pressure. So we got fuel pressure because it's full. It didn't have any last time and we're getting blinking lights. So that's good. That means the sparkulators are sparking, but now we gotta go around to the other side and pull that cover off, which that'll be fun. 
we have Spark, that's cool. Uh, but a thought occurred to me is that we don't always assume that the Spark plug wires are in the correct order too. So that's something to check for. We're also gonna check to make sure that they're not fouled closed, meaning that they'd send a Spark obviously, but uh, there's no gap there to send a Spark. Before we dig into this, cause this is a hot mess to get into. Let's do all the upper easy stuff anyway. That's why I was kind of hoping we didn't have Spark cause this is all up top. And that's all down there and, and through the wheel well and stuff that's not fun. So we're going to go ahead and pop this one out. This is, I'd call it solar number four. Could be one. I don't know. I'm a GM guy, so uh, it could be one. So I guess we'll call that since the front of the motor, cylinder number one. Uh, we're black, nothing crazy. Uh, of course, this car hasn't run any in a long time. Uh, it was gapped too close. We're at 20,000, so it's supposed to be about 40,000. So... Uh, we'll open that up and that's warranting taking the rest as well. Then we're going to count, look at our rotor and see if we can uh, make sure our plug order is right um, before we move on to the next step, which is trying it again. <laughs> All the plugs are good. And then we were able to find on the internet, not the service manual actually, the firing order on the distributor is correct. So we go one, three, four, two, and it's set up correctly. So we're actually sparking well. So we have good plugs, presumably good wires. We are getting spark per our induction meter, so the next step for us would be that something's wrong with the, the, the valve timing here. So, uh, procedure for this, we're going to call it night, but we'll be back at it tomorrow. So we're going to hit the internet, obviously, to see if there's any tips of the trade. But the manual says you got to loosen the alternator, take its belt off. Air conditioner power steering belt, you got to loosen it, take it off. And worst case is you got to pull this motor mount here, which is three bolts, but you got to support it from underneath so we can get this cover off. And it just comes off, and it's really grubby. That's all the fur from. Uh, nice inside though, there's no, like, here's the cap. Okay, we are definitely not lined up. No, we gotta turn it first. Oh. Uh, there's no rubber in here though. So stuff I'm looking for in timing belts is lots of rubber wearings in here and there's none it's fairly clean there's a little bit but nothing crazy some stuff's been sprayed and dripping here but that could be the seal off that that cam unit there so and it's numbered one two three four obviously for the four cylinder but cool we got to put a wrench on the uh we'll put a wrench on it mm -hmm. and uh bring it around and then we also have to find the top dead center for cylinder number one mark and get it lined up as well but there's the witness mark there Mm -hmm. And it's over here. Well, that's for two. Oh. It's for one right here. Oh, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yep. So we'll uh, bring it around to number one top dead center, which is, should be marked on the crank, and see if that lines up. If it is, then the timing's not our issue. Okay. So you need to move this mark? I need to find the mark on that crank. and line it up with top dead center. If there is a mark on the crank, as we hit a compression stroke. Is there a mark on the crank? Uh, what am I looking at? You never looked at the Haynes manual? No. Okay, well, there's a mark on this seat. Can you see my finger? Yes. There's a mark, there's gonna be an arrow or a notch. Okay. That's what we're looking for. I haven't seen the notch yet. Ugh, compression stroke. Mm. Mm. I have not. Oh, there it is. It's right here. It's coming around. Oh, That's a little mark right there. Uh, yeah. Uh, that one right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bring it right to that. No, nope, she's top dead center. The one's right on. Yeah. The timing's not out. Timing so, is not out. Let's record that. Right. I did. Oh, cool. So timing's not out on the cam. So thinking last night, okay, we could be dealing with a fuel injection permissive issue. Yep. With the timing being correct, then we have to keep looking around. We do smell unburnt fuel when we turn it, but we have to really make sure it's unburnt fuel. So number one, we've lifted, pulled the plug out of number one cylinder. So number one, we're going to smell the fuel bad hopefully, because it's going to be pushing out by the cylinder for compression stroke. It's going to sound weird, hopefully, too, because we're not compressing. We'll also see our valve train turnover. And we actually just put, uh, we've grounded our plug out against the block. 
with our spark plug wire here. So we should see, this is just to make sure my induction wasn't picking up a super weak signal. Uh, we should see a, a fairly decent arc across there. If that is arc, then we know A, the timing is right, B, the ignition's right. So we're stuck with looking at the fuel system. And so while we may have fuel pressure thanks to the fuel pump to the system, uh, obviously we, we're, we're not injecting enough or the injectors are filthy or something like that. But uh, it's not barking off anywhere, but let's give it a kick over and see if it goes sparky spark. Yeah, spark's fine. Okay. Well, I think it's fine. Yep. Yep. Uh, can you crank it a little bit more for me, please? Oh, we're not getting it. Okay, we're good. We have no fuel. Uh, that's spraying in my face, and all I'm getting is a slight old fuel smell. So we still have our fuel issue. So everything else seems okay. Our fuel pump is doing its thing, but we, our fuel rail is not full of gas. So let's pop. So the system comes, we have fuel coming in from our fuel filter, which is still cold, um, coming into our fuel injectors here. So this is our pressurized, here's our fuel pressure regulator valve uh, that vents back to the tank and the vacuum's here. This bolt comes off and we can, uh, it's dry, but we can uh, bleed out. So what we'll do is I think we'll probably take this off. We'll put the plug back in. Uh, we'll put, take this off and drain all that out, make sure there's stuff draining out of it and make sure we're not plugged somewhere else. So that's the next step, I guess. <clears throat> this is not. There we go. Don't pee in my face. I would have peed now. I was gonna say, uh, it hasn't started leaking yet. It's, uh, ooh, varnishy. Yep. Oh, there's a... There's a vacuum something, whatever we're going to be peeing on it. Maybe I'll put a rag under that so we can catch all that. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yes! Massive amounts of gas! Okay. Upper section. Right. So 30 amp fuel injectors is there. That one, yep. Uh, who else is on uh, here? No, it's okay. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, who else is on here? Headlights, they work for sure. So we're getting power up here. EBS pump, heater, yeah. Heater. Block heater, I guess. I guess, yeah. Air conditioning and audio. The audio works too. So we're getting power to the, the brick. Mm -hmm. So the fuse should be fine. Yeah. So how do we check the... Uh... In trying to diagnose the problems and this video is getting long. Uh, you can use a analog volt gauge, but I don't have one, I have a digital one. Uh, the other idea is to use a Noid light set. And what these are, and they're fairly not expensive. They're essentially just like an, essentially an LED that you plug into your fuel injector pl plug, and then you crank the car over, and if there's a pulse signal getting to that injector, that means it's working. But if it stays on or doesn't blink, then you know, the electrical signal is the issue and not the injector, and that's where we're at now. Is it, is it the electrical signal or is it our $50 fuel injector? So uh, I think these are Bosch units. It looks like that's the plug that's going to fit. I believe we're just dealing with different styles of plugs. So we'll just take good old number two here and uh, plug it in like so. So now if I go put the car in, uh, start it, essentially, uh, we should see a blinking, hopefully. Uh, that injector being told to pulse. Hey! What's it doing? Blinking like crazy. Is it? Yep. Perfect. You just have to visually check it. Okay. Yep. She's blinking. So if you have any questions or comments to leave, please leave them. Like we always, I don't know a lot about Fords or Ford probes. So if you have some stuff to add, please add that. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, all that good stuff, please do. Please like and subscribe to the Turbo 31 channel to support the car itself. 
and uh, I always like to leave something with slow motion. So I'm going to have someone hold the camera and, <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll crank on it and you can hear it crank in slow motion. <laughs> 